you know, from Microsoft's perspective here, there there are a couple of big factors that are involved um, that are really driving how you are going to use business systems in the future. Um, and it's not just Microsoft. It, quite honestly, there are other innovators in the space as well. Um, we just know that with Microsoft, we have a very solid platform to tackle many of the business process requirements that you have. And if we talk about the mission of Microsoft, of what they're tackling from, if you back up and just look at it from a technology and platform perspective, really they're saying mobile first and cloud first. This has been a common theme for the last four years. Um, and the example of that is that I want to be able to create a contract, for example, or a proposal from my iPad. And I don't want to care that it's an Apple device or a Microsoft device or a Google device. I want to be able to use whatever tool I have to be able to enter in data to do that. And I want to be anywhere when I'm doing it as well. So that's that cloud first concept too, not just mobile in terms of the device, but being able to share this information in the cloud to access it without from an IT perspective, having to maintain firewall rules and all these different things basically to make it work. You just want it in the cloud, which should make it easier than to interact with that data. And so really what Microsoft is focusing on is building that best in class platform uh, and the productivity services to support them that mobile first and cloud first world. And really when we talk about this, we start focusing on what we classify um, as digital transformation. And this is a word that's used, I, I think it's really overly used inside of the industry right now, but the, the concept makes sense. And basically what we're saying is that we're trying to engage optimize, empower, and transform your business by making it easier to interact with business systems. And the way that we do that is we shift from designing things um, from what we would classify as a user experience or a UI, where you make you know shiny new objects that people buy, right? That used to be the old way of doing software to what we classify as data and intelligence, because data and intelligence is really what drives business solutions, not that you have the ability to put a really fancy graphic on the page, but that you are able to make a decision off of fact-based information in terms of then how you then move that process forward. And the example of that is that most systems that I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you've implemented, um, all of you on the call, reporting is always a pain point, right? Because it's an afterthought because you focus on the process and the look and feel versus focusing on the data perspective with it. So when we start looking at how we implement solutions now, what we're really trying to get uh, is that perspective of understanding what are you putting into the data and then representing that in multiple areas. In the example, um, when you when you create a proposal that becomes a contract, there is going to be a pricing implication when the operational perspective of your system or your business process. Typically, end users that are interacting for a proposal are going to want more of a CRM type look and feel. They're going to want to be able to see accounts. They're going to want to be able to maintain the relationship and they're going to want to have mailing lists and all these different tasks that are what we would classify as a customer relationship management capability or CRM. But the end output of that drives pricing. And that pricing then drives invoicing, which is more of an operational perspective as part of this. So by Keeping track of what the data requirements are, we can then create targeted experiences then for each of these individual users while still providing a unified view of how we then interact um, with our customers, with our growers, and basically with our prospects. And what's happening here is that we're seeing a huge uh, evolution uh, of these business systems and changes that are occurring inside of it. And if you look at this, it probably resonates with some of you where, you know, back in the day we had isolated systems that weren't connected, right? I mean, that's, we're talking quite some time ago for that. And then we have complex, slow and expensive systems to deploy with it. And then we have difficult um, to update, maintain systems that were part of it. And if you look at these, some of you might be in some of these different areas, but when we look at a business system perspective with this, I mean, we're talking about the 70s for the first one with the isolated systems. We're talking about the 90s with the complex systems. 
And even in 2015, before the introduction of these new types of cloud-based and mobile platforms, you know, doing an update to a system, I'm sure you've gotten a quote from your other providers, I mean, it can cost millions of dollars to go through and do just an upgrade. So it's like, well, why, why am I going to upgrade to a technology then that isn't part of a modern mobile cloud platform? Even though you say it is, you've created your own accounting capabilities, but I need a lot of those base concepts and accounting software solutions, for example, that Dynamics provides. So just as a, as an, uh, you know, the evolution of what's occurring here, you can see what's happening very quickly. And what we're trying to move to as part of this is away from reactive, siloed, incomplete, and, you know, not being able to report the activity to being more proactive. So using the system to create automation to inform you of some action that needs to occur before it happens. Um, we're trying to see a, a connected view of the data. We're trying to put the data together in a holistic perspective. And really, we're trying to deliver then outcomes instead of reporting off of the activity with it, right? We're trying to set a goal and then from that goal, measure it and then deliver off of that goal in an easy to use way, in a way that end users can build these metrics into um, really what they're driving. And what we've chosen with that once again really is that cloud platform. And so if we talk about, let's look at the technologies that we can use from a leverage capability um, set using Microsoft. Um, first is data, cloud services, common data model, having one database basically to be able to define all of your customers, for example, that you can access from multiple different systems is a huge leg up in terms of being able to report and view your data. But then we start talking about Azure. So if you want to take, for example, um, uh, a drone and you want, and let's say you've created it uh, or you're using a third party for it as well, um, you do the mapping exercise with it where it's looking at the color of the crop. And from that color, we can determine, for example, um, nitrogen or any type of uh, imbalance uh, in the soil based upon the result of the color of a particular plant, or even taking a picture of plants to see how many seeds are there to, uh, you know, basically drive an expected yield with it, that's the intelligence platform that we can use to do that, which uses, for example, some of the computer vision capabilities um, inside of Azure to be able to build these models to report off of this information. Then we start talking about, okay, that's great. That's the deep technical stuff. But what about from an end user perspective? From an end user perspective, you can use Power Platform to go ahead and create custom apps as an end user, and then also create custom KPI visual reports within Power BI, and then finally use Flow or Automate to create triggers so that when an event happens inside of your system, such as a grower buys a certain amount of product and you want to then personally call them, you can create what we call a flow or an automate to be able to then inform you of that. And that doesn't require then any custom development to do that. Then we hook into Office 365 so that we can take the data that's in Dynamics and send it to an Excel workbook because you want to be able to do a pivot chart off of it. Or we actually generate emails um, when we actually have, for example, a settlement process that goes directly to their email account or even to their text uh, as a text message basically to their phone. So we have a lot of integrated capabilities with Office 365 to be able to drive that. And then finally, if you think about it, you may want to do, for example, document scanning, OCR, from an AP perspective. Now, if you buy a, a, an ag-specific solution, what partner do they have that's going to create that solution for that one specific software product? Whereas when we start looking at using Dynamics, we have the power of partners and ISVs or what they call independent software vendors that build extended functionality that crosses industries that you can then use. Examples, if you want to do bank uh, rec, uh, bank rec uh, automation, um, where basically you would have your bank rec statement sent to you and you can match it up as part of that process, that's natively a capability inside of an ISV that you can add then into Dynamics 365. You don't have to pay to customize it and you don't have to wait for your agricultural specific solution to add that capability. So this opens up so many different possibilities um, for you to be able to really drive that. 